Hello guys and welcome back to another skill point guide video for Total War Warhammer 3 on Immortal Empires. Uh, now I know it's been a while since I've made one of these videos, um, but with Warhammer 3, uh, Immortal Empires now being free for those of you who purchased Warhammer 3, and uh, just looking at how well the previous uh, skill guide videos I had made, I thought it would be a good time to get back into them again, um, especially with all the new people potentially getting into Warhammer um, for the first time, or just potentially needed a refresher because I know especially you know if we zoom out here and you see it the, just the huge map um, there's a lot that can be overwhelming for newer players so hopefully these skill guide videos will just kind of help shed some light on um, basically on what you can expect from a lord what is good for a legendary lord um, for an army you know just kind of to help you progress in your campaigns um, so without further ado, let's just kind of jump into how I'm gonna, going to progress in these videos. Now instead of just like putting the points in and then talking about it, I'm just going to actively do it. Um, because for some legendary lords here, like Miao Ying, um, they obviously have more than 50 skill points you can use in a campaign. Which means you're going to have to pick and choose which ones you want. Now, in her case, you can make her a, um, you can buff certain units in her army, you can make her a single um, entity killing machine, you can buff um, in her special skill tree here, there's tons of things that you can do. Um, I'm just going to go and describing kind of what I recommend doing, because um, obviously, you know, if you just want to make her a one woman killing machine, you just do her magic, you do her melee, and then that's it. You don't worry about the red line. Um, but in general, I would imagine most of you using a legendary lord also want to be able to use some other units in the game, because um, it's fairly easy to make a one man or one woman doomstack in the game. Um, but without further ado, let's jump into what I would recommend doing with your skill points. Um, now granted, obviously again, you won't have 50 uh, skill points on turn 1. Um, I downloaded a console command mod that just let me put um, 50 skill points um, at her disposal. That way I can just actually make this video. You don't actually start off with 50 on turn 1. Just want to reiterate that. But anyway, so the first skill point I would recommend doing, it's pretty standard through any um, legendary Lord in your campaign is get root marcher um, campaign movement range is a fantastic thing and will kind of make the difference in certain scenarios whether or not you're able to attack a, a enemy Lord get to an enemy settlement or help you go in ambush stance and camp stance whatever it may be um, campaign movement range is a great thing to get um, especially early on um, in terms of spending skill points now after that however um, it kind of depends to what your faction mechanics are in this case um, her faction mechanic allows um, all armies to have a 20% increase to ammunition and as you're progressing to um, if we go up just briefly into her sp special skill tree um, she also um, has a reload time reduction of plus 20% for her army as well as range for missile units plus 10% now I d believe this line here doesn't unlock until rank 12 and so between that it kind of depends uh, before you get to that rank in your own campaign it kind of depends what you want to do whether you want to make her more durable in melee or if you want her to become a spellcaster because you will have a metal um, wizard that you can use for your damage dealing in terms of magic potential however what I would recommend doing is actually going down her um, magic line first just because she can actually heal the other single entities in her army. So definitely put two points into earth blood. Earth blood is really good. Um, definitely get life bloom that way it passively heals every unit in your army. Um, once she's actually casting something it doesn't have to be earth blood. Um, it can be any spell and life bloom will activate. Um, after that, it really kind of just depends if you want Missile Mirror or the Storm of Shadows. I personally go with the Storm of Shadows. It's a good area of effect debuff um, for all enemies in the 35 meter range. Plus, thinking about what we've already mentioned with the amount of ammunition and range and the reload Emperor reduction time you can provide this. for missile units. If your enemy units are coming at you much slower, that just gives your units more time to shoot the enemy down. Um, 
I also go with the power of yin for another passive ability because it slows down the enemy even further and also decreases their armor which a makes you know your missile units that sword. don't have a whole lot of armor piercing missile damage do that much strong uh, do that much better on, against the enemy um, units there the majestic now, defender you will have to put one point in a missile mirror just to unlock evasion so you can get into the second part of her magic line. But other than that, get evasion, get regrowth, uh, talons of the night, magical reserves, arcane conduit. Uh, don't recommend getting earthing because I'm pretty sure at this stage in the game anyway, um, it could change in patch 3.0 but as of right now on april 3rd is when i'm recording this video uh the miscast um reduction ability and the best also for defense. like any Requires items um you may get in the game actually doesn't work so putting the a point right now into earthing yeah. is just useless so don't worry about it um but that's her magic line that's what i would recommend getting you can put an extra point into mi uh, missile mirror however I've, I've seen it perform well and I've seen it perform badly. It's just really kind of a hit and miss. Um, sometimes I'll put in two points and for the for the sake of the video I will put two into it. Um, it, it really just, it's, it's very difficult to use effectively because you have to constantly be watching um, the enemy missile units which means you're not paying attention to the other um, units on the battlefield just to cast that one spell. Plus, there are other tools at your disposal to get rid of um, enemy missile units, such as the Talons of the Night. That's a really good Vortex spell. Um, but after going down the magic line, you'll have unlocked enough skill points to be able to get her like special skill tree, which basically recommend getting every single one of them. Um, for several several reasons now if we go with the first one obviously you have to do the aura of majesty here just to unlock the others um, but the aura of majesty gives you a negative nine uh, melee defense debuff for any any enemy lord or hero while you're in dragon form it's a really good debuff just against the enemy units basically straight to it um, just a really good debuff that's also a passive um, now harmonious is really good if you want to work towards um, confederations in your campaigns um, really it'll be mainly Zhao useful Ming. for Zhao Ming because you and your brother when playing as Miao Ying here um, will be pretty pretty stubborn in terms of wanting to confederate, confederate with you um, the reinforced bastion is really good um, being in the north you will more likely than not spend a lot of time fighting against um, chaos up here um, you'll have village Potentially Kolek, potentially Archeon come down in here. Usually it's just Village though, um, because you don't really benefit from venturing out into the Chaos Waste because it's not favorable territory. So you're going to just end up spending a lot of money and resources on the gate buildings dish just to protect them and make them defensive. Uh, more defensive yeah. so you don't Ready have to worry to about defend. Chaos as much. So just really good. Make them cheaper. Why not? It's, it, it's useful. Go for it. Now, Master of the Storm ability, it's really good. Co provides a 25% cooldown to all your Lore of Life spells. So that's your Earth Blood. That's your Flesh to Stone here. I forgot to put points into them. Um, regrowth, really good spells here. Really good for her, especially if you end up going with a single entity um, playthrough with her. Giving her physical resistance for almost 40 seconds is really, really good. Um, and uh, moving on. Now, if you go with the actual providing her with um, some units in your in your armies, you can provide them with more melee defense, more ward save, and then again, more range for your missile units and reload time reduction for your missile units as well in your army. Um, th these are just really good, again, if you plan on using an actual army, plus, again, being up here in the north, you're going to be fighting lots and lots of chaos in your campaigns. Um, even if you move to the north here and get rid of village and the Norskin tribes here, you're going to end up running into Kolak, you're going to end up running into Archeon. Um, once the DLC comes out, you'll be running into Chaos Dwarf, so you're going to be fighting against a lot of um, Chaos-type factions there. So it's just a really good way to provide your units um, with a little more tankiness. Um, now, the Eye of the Storm is a really good ability when she's in Dragon Form. It uh, just provides her with more personal buffs, more base weapon damage, armor piercing damage, and more melee attack. Just makes her a lot stronger, basically. So After that... 
really it just kind of depends what you want to focus on individually um, personally at this point I usually go down the melee line and just make her as strong as possible give her more charge bonus more health um, more melee attack the foe seeker that's all good weapon strength melee attack even more speed uh, melee defense and deadly onslaught just make her as tanky as possible um, and then any other remaining points I usually end up also getting spell resistance and missile resistance again just making her more tanky more durable against missile fire um, and spells such as spirit leech or um, any like vindictive glare type like um, uh, or the uh, like I think it's the blue fire singe spell um, just give yourself some protection against that um, which as you can already see we've already spent quite a few of the skill points just on her magic line on her um, melee line as well as her special skills so after that it really kind of just depends what you feel like spending on personally though if you're looking to give her an actual army again just go with the sure aim provides more range so if you add that 10% with the other 10% you're up to 20% and then just more missile strength will make them even stronger there um, and then your last skill point really just kind of depends on what you want to do uh, sometimes I put it in the blue line sometimes I put it in armor or even mentors a really good ability just to help your other characters in your campaign um, level up more there um, so yeah that that's really kind of what I have for you in terms of her skill tree um, let me know down in the comments what you guys think how you've leveled up Miao Ying if you've played as her um, but really, she's she's a legendary lord that you can do a lot of things with. You just end up ha needing um, needing to decide what path you want to go down. You know, you don't have to make her tankier. You don't necessarily need her um, magic line. You can make her just buff your entire army. It really just depends there. But this is what I would recommend doing. It utilizes both her melee prowess being in a dragon form. Plus, who doesn't like watching a dragon fight? Uh, makes her powerful spell casting gives good bonuses to her army um, Even if you don't go down the red line, you're still able to buff her army, which is really good. Um, she's a very powerful legendary lord um, But anyway again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought um, If you guys enjoyed kind of the process of me going through, you know the points of You know like what to get first what to get second and so on and so forth um, definitely let me know because your guys' feedback is definitely appreciated and will let me know how I should progress in future videos like this so don't forget to hit that like so hit that sub button if you're enjoying the content and I will see you guys next time for the next stream or uh, skill guide video bye